welcome to this episode of Hank's Corner. I am Hank Jr., part of Hank Jr. Productions, where I am documenting life's moments through photography, videography, and now podcasting. And uh, lo and behold, I got a second guest on for the month out of Missouri. Today we have Mark Perkins on. Mark, how are you doing today? Great, Hank. Thanks for having me on, man. It's uh, uh, It's a pleasure. Well, I'm glad that you're here. And yeah, like I said, that you, you, you're the second artist this month in Missouri. So uh, that's that's great because uh, there's a lot of great talent out there. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm glad that you're one of them that's on here. So uh, tell me where in Missouri are you located? So I'm, I'm out of uh, Troy, Missouri. Um, actually, Hawk Point, Troy, you can you say either one. Our, our back, our back uh, hay fields actually in Hawk Point and our house is actually located in Troy, Missouri. So we're on, on that thin line between them. Um, but I grew up in O'Fallon, Missouri. So about 30 minutes from Troy, um, not really a small town. I hung out in a small town called St. Paul, but, uh, O'Fallon's not really small town. I guess you could say to where you hear in the country songs, but, uh, um, I hung out with all the good old boys and, and girls over in St. Paul, which is a small town. So I, uh, roots run deep down there and then, uh, moved out to Troy about three years ago with my wife um and now my parents own a farm out here so okay and when you talked about the farm i had heard that uh i guess there was a cow born today tell me a little <laughs> bit about that yeah no actually we were uh putting the kid putting the kid down uh for tonight and uh get a text from my mom hey come down here we have a surprise so we put him down real quick and uh went downstairs and my dad's screaming from uh one of the uh the cow pens that we got and uh he's like come out here you got to see this and we knew one of them was pregnant but uh we thought she was a lot earlier on than what we thought and we came out there and lo and behold there's a baby calf sitting there so we had that happen tonight (laughs) oh wow well that's 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 kind of amazing to to have something like that happen but uh right um do you have you know a bunch of cows or and what else do you have on the farm so we've got a crap load of chickens We've got two goats that are kind of my mom's pets, you can say. Okay. <laughs> and then we've got two um, bottle-fed um, Highland calves and uh, two more Dexter Highland crosses, um, both full-grown. And one of them just had another Dexter Highland cross um, mm-hmm. calf tonight. So we've got five cows now um, trying to grow it as we can and starting slow, but <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> Yeah. So is that one of your jobs working there on the farm or do you do something else as well? So uh, I I actually hang garage doors for a living, um, do music on the side and the farm thing came. uh, So I'm actually sorry about the the backdrop. I'm actually currently living with my parents for the next two months while our house is being built about three acres away. So Mm. that was kind of the deal with that is that my dad said, uh, I'll, I'll give you some hand-me-down land if you help me out with the farm. And I couldn't hey, pass that up. So <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, that sounds like a great living out there. So, right. uh, you know, I got the opportunity and, I, and I'm wearing the shirt today to see you out there at freedom jam. And, uh, I did some video out uh, of you out there and I'm going to play a little clip for you real quick. My name's Mark Perkins. Y'all y'all ready to party with me? Hey! 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 Yeah. 
Freedom Jam. T- tell me about uh, you know your experience there because that was your second time uh, yeah. being out there. But I, I bet it's still as special as the first time. What what does Freedom Jam mean to you? Because I know it, it means something special to you. Yeah, Freedom Jam is awesome. Um, not only the camaraderie we get between all the artists that that get to that you get to meet there. Um, I mean, I'm now writing and, and doing stuff with some of the artists from the first Freedom Jam we had um back in 2019 or 2020 sorry and then uh still collabing with some of the same artists and new ones from uh this year i mean we had um another media company come down and we're good friends with them and i mean that one of the photographers good friends with him still from the first freedom jam but uh besides the camaraderie and stuff i mean what really hits home to me um being a national guard member myself um is the bigger picture of freedom jam and that is to be able to give back to uh veterans and first responders in need that are either injured or hurt in a uh, line of duty or just need some support um and and that the fact that we can have so many good country artists um and fans come together to something like that is is really showing what's america is about so Yeah. And when I got invited to go, I mean, obviously the artists are amazing that play on that stage there. But like you said, to be able to give back uh, to our veterans in such a way, I mean, it was a win-win situation. Great music, great entertainment and a great cause. Exactly. Yeah. You don't really get a good mixture of that. No. And and just out of curiosity, um, I'm sure you got to watch some of the acts out there. Did you have one in particular this past year that uh, you really enjoyed? So, I mean, I enjoyed a ton of them. I drew all of them, actually. But uh, one of the coolest moments that I think I had was being able to share the stage with Alexander Kay. And now that she's mm. uh, torn with Tim McGraw and everything like that. And that's one of the coolest things about Freedom Jam is is a lot of people, um, they'll, they'll see the lineup and they'll be like, oh, well, I don't know them. I don't know them. Well, I mean, in 2020, we had Walker County headline. Um, they're now torn with Old Dominion. And uh, this year, I mean, we had Alexander Kay. And now she's torn with Tim McGraw. And so, yeah, you might not know the names now, but uh, you'll definitely recognize them in the future. And I think that was one of the coolest things is that I got to share the stage with uh, some of them cool acts like that being so new to myself. So, yeah, and that's, uh, you know, very amazing for Alexandra. So congratulations to her. But you're right. Exactly. I mean, some of these artists, like you said, you may not know today, but uh, I, I think that there is, you know, a selective process when Brian Judy uh pulls the axe and so you know they're on their way up and so why not go out and try to see it before they you know get to the big stadiums and then maybe you're way all the way in the back where you know freedom jam a lot of people can get pretty close up and uh they have meet and greets there and it was just uh such an awesome event yeah definitely Okay. And one of the songs that I got to hear out there that you played was uh, 12 Ounces Away. Uh, You know, at the time, I didn't know that was going to be your, you know, next single being released. And I enjoyed it there. uh, And I'm so glad that it's released. And, uh, uh, you know, a previous Friday, I did put it on my new music Friday and got to play it. And I got a great reaction from the people that were listening to it. They they, they love the song. They love the video. Tell me a little bit about 12 Ounces Away. Yeah, so 12 Ounces Away, um, it's been a long time coming to release that one. Um, we actually wrote that, me and my fiddle player, um, he wrote most of it. And I came, came up with the idea and, and said, hey, I have a... So it, I, I texted him with this idea about it, and he's like, hold on, I got I got something. And he started writing it, and like 30 minutes later, he was already sending me lyrics. And so we got down and working on it. And, and uh, so pretty much the backstory behind 12 Ounces Away is... Uh, you know, like kind of everybody has their backstabbing friends. And uh, so I had my backstabbing friend. I'm not going to name names, but that's kind of where <laughs> the idea generated from. Um, and then Andrew kind of wanted to take it into a different route. And so to kind of take two things into the same song. And so he has a lot of um, being being retired Air Force himself. He had a lot of time spent with some of his brothers and sisters. And um, I don't know. If, if you or a lot of people on here listen and know about the, the statistic with uh, um, suicide in, in the armed forces. And I had heard but, that, uh, but go ahead and tell us because it, it, yeah. it is a very staggering statistic. Yeah, it's, I mean, something, I, I can't remember off the top of my hand. I think it's something about 20, 20, 20 people a day 
uh, commit suicide in the uh, either being active or retired armed forces. And uh, it's it's crazy to hear that. And uh, so with 12 ounces away, Andrew kind of took it not to the dark side, but just putting it out there that it is there. And um, but there's a line in the song that says, uh, I know the end is right in, or it finally catches up to me. I know the end is right in front of me. Um, well, originally he had, uh, he had written, um, it finally catches up to me. I swear to miss a big old maple tree. And that was kind of blunt. And so I kind of wanted to change that, but going back to that, he had one of his old, uh, brothers from the air force try to commit suicide by running off, getting drunk mm. and trying to run himself into a tree. And so that's kind of where that come from. And, uh, so it's, it's kind of a, a twist on forgetting a memory and bringing that awareness to armed force suicides and uh, suicides in the line of duty, um, kind of bringing both of those points up and, and kind of saying, hey, if you are out there and you're ever thinking about it, reach out to somebody because there is somebody that, that you mean the world to and, and everything like that. And there's national um, hotlines that you can call. Um, and so that's kind of where 12 Ounces Away was brought upon. And, uh, and that's we awesome were... because it's kind of like a trifecta. I mean, on the outside of it, when you're watching the video or just listening, to it, it sounds like a good beat song. You're moving, uh, you know, your voice when you do it is, is just awesome. And it's very right. entertaining. And then of course, you know, you talk about the 12 ounces, like you said, to, to forget your, you know, normal problems in life or your backstabbing friends. But then on the flip side, uh, the third side of that is you know this bringing this awareness and and to me uh you know suicide mental health and all that is is something that i've been trying to bring a lot of awareness to myself because uh you know it is kind of stigmatized uh in in the regular world but also you know it, it's more prevalent within our armed forces and we kind of just sweep that under the rug it seems like and and you know it, it happens so much more like you said the statistics are crazy on on the suicide and I'm just glad that, you know, you guys are doing that. Like I said, it's a fun song, but at the same time, it's bringing that awareness. Exactly. Yeah, and it, it's it's really cool. And that's one of my favorite things about music is, is the way it talks to people. Mm -hmm. um, and so seeing somebody react off of that, um, I think Andrew actually texted me about two days ago and said that he had one of his buddies um, in the armed forces. He was a retired um, Marine. He was in Afghanistan and, and, and sanctioned with one of the uh, the tank uh, commands. And uh, he texted Andrew, called Andrew and said, hey, I just wanted to let you know I reached out to the suicide hotline tonight. Um, I was about seconds away from ending my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, what saved me was he, he actually, I guess, was he pulled up our song and then listened to it. And so to hear that is 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 amazing. And uh, I think wow. that's what made him seem and wanted to call that hotline and then call Andrew, my fiddle player who actually wrote that song with me. And so it's, it's been really hitting hard to us the past two days about hearing that. So, well, and, really and that's cool. amazing because one of the questions I was going to ask later on in the broadcast was, you know, tell me something that somebody's ever said to you uh, about your music that, you know, you really appreciate it, but how do you top something like this where you, somebody's telling you your song basically saved my life? Yeah, you can't, you really can't. Um, I've had, I mean, you have so many fans and, and, and family that support you and tell you your music is great and this and that, but to hear something like that is just mind blowing and really opens your eyes to, to what music can do to people. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and play 12 ounces away here on Hank's Corner. Another betrayed memory You were just pretending to be true Thought you'd always have my pain Now there's a knife buried deep inside Oh, why do you take? I don't know where we went wrong I thought our vibe was strong Won't be 
other night out on the town Time to paint it red all up and down Knock them back like it's going out of style This night is gonna last a long while It finally catches up to me I know the end is right in front of me Looks like I could almost be Another 12 ounces away And that was 12 Ounces Away by Mark Perkins here on Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. So tell me, how, how did you get started with uh, music? Was it something you've always done or was it something that you just picked up later? Because I kind of heard something that it you didn't think that it was going to be for you initially. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I guess that you can say I, I kind of always been in music. Um, I got a drum set at about eight years old for Christmas. Um, eight or 10. I can't really remember the age, but anyways, younger in life, I got a, I got a drum set for my parents for Christmas and uh, played the crap out of it. And uh, I actually joined in middle school, a, a, a rock band who performed at the, uh, the, the good old talent show and nothing really came of it. Um, and then my parents got me a, uh, a piano and started, uh, I started picking that up pretty easily and loved the crap out of that. And they wanted to get me private lessons. And so we hired somebody to come to the house and give me lessons and and i was doing these competitions and recitals and i was actually one blue ribbon away from winning a full ride scholarship to washington university out here in st louis and being the young dumb self i was just all of a sudden and stopped hmm. um for some reason i don't know i was young and dumb not thinking about my future or anything like that but uh and then uh shortly after that got a guitar um and uh, probably like a lot of the stories you hear about people is they get really mad when they try to teach themselves how to play guitar. That's the same exact story you'll hear from me. I threw it under the bed and never thought twice about it um, hmm. until about four years ago. Well, no, it's three years ago now when I joined the military. Um, I got it out. I was months away from leaving for basic. And I said, you know what? I pulled it out from under the bed, dusted it off, got it restrung, got the neck all tuned up right, um, and just started watching YouTube video after YouTube video. And uh, finally, after that, I—I I mean, I so I would never sing in front of anybody up until three years ago. Um, not my parents, not my wife, not my friends, nobody. It didn't matter who it was. I was too embarrassed to sing in front of you. I always sang in the in the car and in the shower, and was like, yeah, you know. You, I kind of got a good voice, but I would never sing in front of anybody. And um, and why was that? Was that, you know, were you worried about the voice or you just had a natural fear about, you know, 
kind of the the public uh like some people have trouble speaking in public was that it right. or was it more about your talent i think it was just stage fright all, all all over um i really didn't have any speech impediment or fright of speaking in front of people but uh when it came to singing i just didn't i don't know what it was i just didn't sing in front of anybody i wouldn't because i was too embarrassed for some reason and uh I, I left for basic and was down in Fort Leonard Wood uh, for seven, seven and a half months and came back and uh, said, you know what? Screw it. Let's do it. And uh, so I uh, got with one of my buddies from high school and we started jamming and, and uh, playing over some guitar tabs on Ultimate Guitar and YouTube videos. And finally, we were literally playing tiny little coffee shops and, and maybe one show here or there at an open mic um and then i was like you know what let's let's do it let's get a full band together so we found a drummer and it was me my drummer and my my old uh, high school buddy playing in little tiny bars and then got a bass player and then got an it just the ball kept rolling the ball kept rolling mm -hmm. i don't know if it was coming back from basic that that made me say hey let's do it or, or what it was but I would not sing in front of anybody as of three years ago. And I looking back at it, I kicking myself in the butt for it. <laughs> well, you know, and I'm sure that during that time, it, it gave you an opportunity to learn other aspects, uh, whether it is the music uh, industry or just in life in general. So, but here you are now performing for everybody and, and, and there's just so much energy at your shows. And uh, I, I think it's cool to, to watch you. You're very entertaining and, and fun to watch. Uh, do you ever go back to the piano or do you uh, just play guitar and, and dance around the stage? Because the piano <laughs> will keep you, you know, too, too stationary. <laughs> no, I actually just uh, I bought another piano about two months ago um, and I'm starting to pick it back up a little bit. And I've found so far that is really good for songwriting. So I'm, I'm mm. really pumped to uh, get back down to that and, and uh, start learning that as much as I can again and see what comes back to my mind and what I, what I have to teach myself again. But so far, it's come back pretty good. Um, but yeah, I do sit down at the piano every once in a while now. And um, But when it comes to guitar, I like to say that I'm a, I'm a singer that likes to play, likes to try to play guitar. Okay. <laughs> so I, uh, I know chords. I don't know how to, uh, I can pick. I can play chords, bar chords, and uh, but the electric guitar, I tried picking that up. Can't really do it yet. Um, so, and who yeah. were some who were some of your earlier influences growing up? So that's always a uh, a weird question. So I'm not like any other country artist. Um, I was raised actually. So I got two older sisters. My youngest sister to me is 17 years older than I am, um, and then I had my parents' influence as well. So. I was raised in kind of a stage of KC95 down here in St. Louis, if you're any aware of that, which is like Sticks, Def Leppard, Ario Speedwagon, all of that. And then I had my sisters on the other side were, that were listening to Blink-182, Sum 41, and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I was kind of raised in the, uh, the rock kind of music genre. Mm -hmm. um, and then it took me going to middle school and uh, hanging out with my cousin a lot on, on their farm and, and their house out in uh, Moscow Mills, Missouri, who really opened my eyes to country music. And uh, ever since, I've, I've just loved the genre. Um, but I still, and you can tell by 12 ounces away that I still have my, uh, my little rock background and try to incorporate that into the country style as much as I can. So Okay. And, and of course, you, you know, you do a few covers on stage and, and yeah. I know you did, uh, you know, some covers that were country like Brooks and Dunn and things like that, but do you ever do any rock covers? And if so, what are some of your favorite, uh, rock covers that you like doing? Yeah. So, uh, I think we actually ended uh freedom jam with it this year. Um, it's probably my favorite rock cover to play. It's pour some sugar on me by Def Leppard. Everybody's go-to, uh, bar rock out song. Um, I love playing it. The the guys up on stage with me love playing it. And so it's just an overall good song. It goes over real well. The crowd's always screaming it back to you. So that's probably got to be my favorite one. Okay. And then early on, uh, one of your first songs that, that came out was uh, Ain't Always Greener. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that and the backstory for that. Yeah. So Ain't Always Greener came out uh, in 2020. It was my first uh, song that I ever actually got in the studio with and uh, released to uh, public on any streaming service and uh 
that idea came from uh so at the time i was hopping jobs back and forth um and couldn't really decide on what i wanted to do um always thought i needed to have a different job or a better car or a better truck or something in life that was something that i didn't have already i thought i needed something bigger and better and uh, i kept finding myself getting that bigger and better thing and then wanting to go back to what i had before mm -hmm. and so uh that's where the idea of ain't always greener um came from because it wasn't always greener on the other side and so i just kind of thought that idea and uh so we actually got to um open up for a national act it's actually it's one of the weirdest shows i've ever played it was down at foo bar in st louis if anybody's uh, aware of it it's your biggest metal rock head venue out there and uh they reached out to me and was like, Hey, would you guys want to open up for a national act? And this was back in 2019 and we were just starting. We just formed a band and we seen national act and we were like, well, heck yeah, we want to do that. We want to open up for a national act. Sure. Why, why wouldn't we? And so we go there and we are a country cover band at the time who is opening for nothing but deathcore and hardcore metal acts and i was like blown away i was like we do not fit in here and so that's where uh um i i met the the headline the headlining uh, lead guitarist dustin back he's actually from kentucky and uh made me really feel at home because he was uh born and raised on country music he was a good old country boy at heart and uh he's like dude we click me and you click we need to get together and we need to write and i was like heck yeah let's do it mm. so uh right after that COVID hit and we couldn't really uh all the travel was shut down so i couldn't go to kentucky he couldn't come to missouri so we were like screw it let's get on facetime so we got on facetime and uh i said hey i got this song idea called ain't always greener and he's like that's awesome let's roll with it and then about 30 minutes later it was just one of those songs that kept rolling off the tongue um and you have some of those sometimes but this one just really came and it just kept flowing real easy and uh so that's where ain't always greener came from and he was amazing enough to uh, want to come down into the studio when we actually recorded that so if you listen to that song um that that lead guitar part and solo is all recorded by uh dustin back out of kentucky um, who was the lead guitarist for reverend jack so okay. well what a great story so uh let's go ahead and play in always greener here on hank's corner i wish i could go back to the good old days Sweet tea sip, guitar pick, that's the way that I was raised Yeah, it's all the same, it don't ever change, that's the way it always seems But your passion and your heart is where it needs to be yeah. it ain't always greater than on the other side Life may be treacherous, but you take it all in stride Don't let your pride keep desires inside it's all inside your mind Gotta take you one day at a time Nobody said it all come easy Everyone's got their own true meaning but the steps you take and the road you pave Ain't gotta be the same If you wanna win You gotta play the game yeah. Ain't always greener and On the other side Life may be treacherous But you take it all in strides Don't let your pride Keep desires inside It's all inside your mind Gotta take you one day Doubt and lay them out And you feel like giving in 
Just remember where you come from And where it all began Ain't always greener On the other side Life may be treacherous But you take it all in strides Don't let you cry Keep desires inside It's all inside your mind Gotta take you one day Welcome back to Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. here with Mark Perkins, and that was Ain't Always Greener. And you told us a little story about, you know, wanting something and then looking back and uh, saying, well, that was actually probably better. And so obviously the, the, the saying, you know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. But there is a thin line between, uh, you know, wanting more because you want to succeed and you want to push yourself and, and, and grow. And so, you know, here we are in 2022, brand new year. Uh, tell me about, you know, 2021 and in, in, in your opinion first on how that went. And what goals you have for 2022 that uh, is going to push you to the next level? Yeah, so 2020 um, was a pretty much a, a big year for for me and my band. Period. Um, we've actually beginning of 2020, we were actually more of a uh, cover band than anything, and uh, we've now switched it. You can actually see the backdrop sitting behind me. I'm in my parents' unfinished basement, so I had to hang that up in a couple blankets to kind of build myself a studio, but. It's actually our old backdrop. Um, the outskirts was my uh, kind of cover band project. And I've always had the dream to turn it into an artist kind of uh, aspect of things and, and wanted to break out as an artist. So 2020 was a big year for us because we did convert from a cover band to more of an artist um, style of music. And that was my biggest plan. And I think moving forward to 2022, we're already booking shows that are out of town. Uh, we're doing a run up to Chicago. Um, we're, I mean, we, we've got people hitting us up left and right about coming out and playing for them. And I mean, this is probably my fifth podcast since 2022. And uh, it's it's already just the balls, just like I said before, it just keeps rolling and keep rolling and it's just getting bigger and better for us. So. Yeah, and I hope 2022 is a, a great year for you, and, and I hope you get out there and, and to be able to tour. And, you know, of course, we have to worry about these restrictions, but, uh, you know, of course, there's always kind of social media to kind of tie you over until you get out there. Uh, but yeah. one of the artists that I, I recently just interviewed was uh, Lucy Switalski, uh out of uh, Missouri. And then, of course, there's Molly Lovett uh, out of St. Louis that are great artists that I love promoting. But uh, can you tell me about uh, some artists that uh, you think that I should be on the lookout or my audience should be on the lookout for and says, hey, you got to listen to these uh, outside of your area there? Um, so I've got a buddy up in here. Um, it's actually Molly's friend, too. Um, Tyler Backwoods um, is his Facebook name. You can look him up. He's he's up and coming. Um, other than that, in Missouri, I, I kind of keep it close to my uh i mean preston airy's up there too yeah you look up preston airy um he's actually we're we're gonna be working with him he actually owns his own studio up in fayette missouri he's a really good guy andrew's gotten to sit in my fiddle player's gotten to sit in with him on a couple um studio sessions and uh he's a really good dude i love his style of music um preston airy's a really good guy to look out for coming out of missouri as well Okay. And that's what I love doing here on Hank's Corner. That's what this is about. It's just promoting artists. And uh, like you said, you know, one day they're starting out, but, uh, you know, tomorrow may be something that uh, they hit it big. And, uh, yeah. you know, so I thank you, Mark, for, you know, coming out and, and being a guest. Or if you ever come down to the Tampa, Florida, florida area would definitely love to come to see you play again maybe i'll be up there for another freedom jam and you'll be a, a third time singer up there but uh so you're more than welcome to be a guest anytime here on hank's corner i appreciate that hank let's go Put 
put a boot in your ass. It's the American way. Hey, Uncle Sam, put your name in the top of his list. And the Statue of Liberty started shaking a fist. And an eagle will fly. And it's gonna be hell when you hear Mother Freedom start ringing her bell.